Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. Today we've got an interesting one. I am reviewing a tiny little universal light meter by Reveni Labs. And this was part of a successful Kickstarter campaign. And as I mentioned in my last video, best of all, it is Canadian made. In my last episode, I did my first impressions on the Fujika GL690. And it's a, it's a beast of a camera. It's very interesting. It's a rangefinder. It's medium format. And those are things that I'm unfamiliar with. So it was like, I don't know, playing golf with a baseball bat. <laughs> that's, that's about the only analogy I can think of on the fly. But one of the things about that camera is that it doesn't have a light meter. And I ended up using my Sekonic 758DR as I do with my Pentax 6.7. Now, this little Reveni Labs meter, it's super tiny and it fits right onto a hot shoe or cold shoe. It fits right onto a shoe and it's very unobtrusive, very not in the way. And I bought this thing a couple of months ago before a fortnight of film and I didn't get a chance to test it out. But now I have the perfect chance and I actually think I've got the perfect camera to test it out on because... The 6.7 doesn't actually have a hot or cold shoe uh, by itself. You've got to buy a grip. So I can't really use it for that in the way that it was intended. But yeah, it is small enough where you're like, oh my god, I've got to keep this on a hot shoe or I'm going to lose it. And it's got a tiny little LED screen on the back. And you just press this button on top here and it will display whatever it's metering for. Like right now I'm on aperture priority mode and it's telling me 5.6 at 1 15th of a second at ISO 400. Uh, again, if you watched last episode, then you know I've already preloaded this film with <laughs> Ultra Fine Extreme 400 and that was donated by the real Peter. In the last episode, I used a 100 millimeter F3.5, which was a 43 millimeter equivalent. And this time I'm going to be using a 180 millimeter F5.6. Um, I was going to film this last night, but when I realized I was shooting ISO 400 with a maximum aperture of 5.6, I didn't feel like chasing light because right now the sun sets at 430 in the afternoon. Um, I decided to wait until the next day. So I'll be shooting around noon today, which is not ideal, but it sure is better than rushing that creative process. But yeah, I'm going to be limited to eight shots because the GL690 shoots ginormous six by nine negatives. And I am so happy with the way that my photos turned out last time. I highly recommend you check out the episode. Uh, the one thing that you guys didn't like is that during the slideshow, I used kind of a ghost image of the photo as the background. And many of you guys told me that was distracting. Enough of you where I'm like, okay, well, I'm definitely not going to do that this time. But I do feel like you guys want to see things at 100%. So I might try something different today with the slideshow. I'll still show the photos with a black background. But maybe I'll incorporate some way to see some of the detail at 100%. Who knows? Uh, I'll be thinking about that as I am out today photographing. With all that being said, nothing to do now but get out there and test this little munchkin. reasons for that. Um, the first is I wanted to compare at least one shot with the meter on the hot shoe and my Sekonic 758DR. <laughs> but what I accidentally did, and I'm sure uh, a lot of you are familiar with this if you've shot a Fujika GL690 or similar camera, and that is I took the photo with the lens cap on really frustrating so you might think that's oh that's not a big deal not a big waste it's like an eighth 
of my photos. That's like 12% gone. Poof. So, maybe I should have tested this meter with a 35mm camera, but too late now. Okay, I wanted to head back into the car for a couple of minutes for a number of reasons. One, it's way colder out there than I thought it was going to be. It's uh, about zero degrees Celsius, but it's so windy, it's just chilling my fingers to the bone. So I'm giving giving myself a bit of a warm-up. I also wanted to head back to the car to look at the manual for this thing, because I'm actually having some trouble using it. Now, it says you're just supposed to press the power button for a sample of the meter reading, but here I am, and I press it, and nothing happens. And what I've actually got to do is I've got to hold it down for several seconds, like a long, long time. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that there are a couple of shots I took, one with the meter here and one with my Sekonic 758DR. And this told me F22 at 1 250th of a second, and the Sekonic 758DR told me, like, oh man, I'm gonna say F22 at 1 30th of a second. What I ended up shooting was F16 at 1 1 25th of a second. I'm just kind of curious what, you know, the, how far this thing goes out, because I've got a fairly telephoto lens right now. Like, is this thing for all cameras? Is it for medium to wide? Um, is it for metering distances only like 50 feet away, 100 feet away, 5 feet away? Of course I'm not expecting a do-it-all meter. Like, there's going to be some limits here. This thing is super tiny. Yeah, it's just a little awkward because, like, I've got to bring up to my eye, then look, and then recompose again. It's still more convenient than the light meter, but depending on the camera that you have, it's going to make it awkward to hold. Yeah, I'm already on shot number five. Um, yeah, I got a shot of this stone, like, archway, and then I got the C-train with a building in the background. That was two. And then I took a shot um, with the cap on, that's three. And then I corrected my shot, that's four, so yeah, now I'm on shot number five. The huge difference between what my Sekonic told me and what the Reveni Labs meter told me, it's pretty jarring. I think what I'm going to do for the rest of my role is I'm going to try and shoot images that are closer to me, stuff that's within maybe 20 feet, and I'm going to try and keep stuff that is even lighting, because the other problem with that shot that I was telling you about is that I got a lot of side lighting. Um, I had the sun coming at me from the side, and I'm just kind of wondering, like, the meter itself has a little hood on it, but it might not have been enough. That side light might have thrown it way off. Because it was telling me, like, yeah, I have 22 at 1 500th of a second. And it seems kind of weird for something that I was shooting that was basically in the shade. I have decided to use my last few frames on this uh, historical uh, Trinity Lutheran Church um, because it's in some shade for the most part. I think what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to get this shot of the doorway. It has even lighting and then I'm going to take a photo of this right here which has mixed lighting and I'm going to see what the results of those are. And that I think that'll be a good test on both ends of the light meter, how it'll do with even lighting and how it'll do with mixed lighting. Now I have been using the Sekonic 758DR to see what it says, and what I've found is, given even lighting, it uh, it pretty much comes out with the exact same reading. Now the Reveni Labs reads in one-stop increments, so it's not as accurate, but it's pretty close. My Sekonic says 1 over 200, and the Raveni says 1 over 250, so close enough. Okay, so obviously I'm back in the car now, and yeah, what I'm finding is that... <laughs> is that I have to press the button for even longer to get it to work. 
yeah, the only explanation I can think of is that it's the cold that it can handle minus two or whatever it is right now. And I'll be able to tell that when I get home and get it warmed up. <laughs> okay guys, I'm back home now. I'm in the dark room. My film is soaking in some pre-bath and I discovered what the issue was. And quite frankly, it was a dying battery. When I took the old battery out and I popped a new one in, um, I just click and boom, meter reading comes on right away. So that's totally on me. That is not an issue with this light meter at all. In fact, it states right in the instructions, don't leave the battery in when you're not using it. And I left the battery in for a good two months. So it's a, an incredible plus that this thing worked at all, considering it had a leaking battery inside it. Again, pop the button, boom, meter reading. Hit the button, just a tap, comes right on. So that is, again, one more time, totally my fault. So I'm going to develop my film. I'm expecting some varied results depending on what I shot. And then after that, we're going to go over how this thing works in detail, as well as what its limitations are, and what I think of the workflow situation. Of course, I'm going to take into account the fact that I was working with a dying battery. I'm half expecting to have at least another frame where I forgot to take the cap off because I was putting the cap on and taking it off. But there's definitely one. There's definitely one instance where I fired the trigger and the lens cap was on there. So I hope it's just the one, but I'm not going to be surprised if it's more than one. It's just one. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look-see. It looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty good. I'm going to go over it in a bit more detail once I have these scanned. I am noticing a bit of light leakage too from the camera. I'm going to toss these in some photo flow and then hang them up to dry and scan them in. No waiting for you though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't enjoy those very much. There might be one shot in there that I would throw up on my Instagram. Yeah, today's photos were more of a means to an end to further test the camera and to test the Riveni light meter. Um, so, yeah, not as, not as excited about these photos as I have been with previous um, photos in episodes from the last say a month or two but you know it is what it is now before i get into the operations of the light meter i want to address a couple of things about the camera these couple of things i want to address are sort of like a add-on to my first impressions from the previous episode so if you saw that this is sort of like a mini part two the first thing that i noticed is that it's infinitely easier to focus horizontally and then recompose for my vertical shot rather than try and focus vertically. I don't know why I can't explain it, but I just found it a lot easier to line things up horizontally and then flip it over after. Uh, the second thing, of course, was 
uh, I left the cap on on one of my shots. And if I had this camera for a year, I guarantee you that that would not be the last time I would accidentally leave it on. I see that as a con. Um, I mean, it's my personal mistake. I'm the one screwing up. But the fact that this is a window um, just makes it that much easier to create that mistake in my workflow. The third thing that I want to address is the light leak. There is definitely a light leak coming from somewhere on this camera. And I'm going to break down some of the characteristics that I took note of for this light leak. I can't say for certain where it's coming from, but some of these characteristics definitely narrows it down. So there is a defining line on both sides of the leak. Um, so I don't know what that means, but it is, there is a defining line on the left side and a defining line on the right side. And I took a scan of it. You can see it here. It goes right from the edge of the frame on both sides, but it stops at a very specific point on either side. This leak is on several frames and how bad the leak is depends on how much time I took in between shots. The one where I left the cap on was actually a happy mistake. And because the cap was on, we can eliminate that it was a problem with the lens or leaf shutter. And the last thing I want to say is that the leak even showed up before the very first frame for whatever that's worth. Um, yeah, there is a defining line on both sides. It's coming from both ends. It's right along the edge, starts right at the edge of the frame. And because the cap was on that one shot, it's not coming from the lens. Now I can't be 100% certain of anything, but it does seem to be coming from the back. You know, there's always another possibility. There's always something else it could be. But I did look at the seals and they look pretty rough so I'm, I wouldn't be too surprised if it came from the door there either at the hinge or near the hinge okay with that out of the way let's move on to the Riveni Labs light meter now for the sake of ease I'm going to be going over the manual itself I printed it off but I'm not going to touch on every single aspect on it just enough to give you a general idea on how this little guy works so this is the power and sample button at the top you tap it to take your reading. Like right now, if I were to shoot straight ahead, <laughs> it would be F11 at 1 8th of a second at ISO 400. So this is the button that you're going to have to hit first anyway. And then you hit your menu button. And right now you can see it's in aperture priority mode. And then you can use these buttons, your left and right button, to make your different choices between aperture and shutter priority. An arrow will indicate which mode you're in when you do a sample. So right here, 1 60th of a second. And your left and right buttons will switch between there. Once you get down to seconds, there'll be an S at the end. And then once you get up to over a thousandth, it'll give you like a K afterwards. This little guy will go from one hour exposure to one eight thousandth of a second and f.7 to f1024 so this would actually be really good for a pinhole camera it also goes from iso 1 to iso 12800 in order to change your iso you're going to press menu and you're going to keep pressing menu until you see iso listed at the top and then from there you can use the left and right buttons to adjust as I've probably mentioned already, this uses a single LR44 battery. These here are lanyard holes, just in case you want to buy a strap for it. The other thing I should say is that sometimes it's shoe mount. It's a little sticky the first couple times it goes in. All you got to do is pop it in a few times um, and it'll actually, it'll wear down a bit. You'll <laughs> more or less sand it into place. I'm just reading about the battery life here. It says, do not store the Reveni Labs light meter for long periods of time with the battery installed. The standby life of an installed battery is approximately one year. I would beg to differ on that, actually. Um, now, I know I probably shouldn't have left the battery in anyway, but I only left it in for two months. 
and it was already leaking. Let me go find that battery. Here it is. This is the battery that was included with the uh, Reveni Labs light meter. You can see all that green is leaky battery acid. So I would recommend that they revise this instruction and say don't leave in for more than a month, to be honest with you. The battery actually goes into a little slot right here, and you want to make sure that you put it into the tray and not try and jam it into here. It goes positive side down, and then that just slides right in there like that. The other thing that I learned about this guy is that its angle of view on the front is about 45 degrees. So it's more of a wide than a telephoto. It's definitely not a spot meter. It takes, it takes in a lot more light than just the small amount that my Psychonic 758 DR would. And that's why there was such a difference in the readings. So the other thing that this has, which I really like, is exposure compensation. And that even though the meter reads in full stop increments, you can do exposure compensation in one third stop increments. Where I would find this useful is photographing snow, where I need to go about a stop and a half over. The maximum that you can do exposure compensation is two stops on either side. And that covers about 90% uh, of it. Units made after November 2020 will have a um, little icon that shows you the exposure compensation setting, whether it's over or under. But, um, oh, and continuous um, meter reading by holding down the power button. So there is an updated version. I guess I missed the mark by weeks. But yeah, that wraps up the instructional portion of it. So what do I think about this little guy other than being ridiculously easy to lose? I mean, look at this thing. Even the, where is it? <laughs> yeah, I can't even find the case for it right now. I had it around here somewhere. Um, first off, I would recommend leaving this thing on a hot shoe at all times, uh, battery or not, just to uh, not lose it randomly. I think this thing is really cool. I think that despite the issues that I had, this is a big game changer and it solves a lot of issues. So this adds a lot of convenience for me. Uh, normally I would take out my light meter and I would do a spot check and then I would put the light meter away. Then I would take out my camera and then I would take the shot. And between that time, the lighting can change. My subject could run off. A whole bunch of different things could happen. But with the Reveni Labs, at least I can just hit the button and my meter reading comes up right away, at least when it's on a full battery. And it's got features that you wouldn't expect, like exposure compensation, and it has extreme light meter readability. Um, my Siconic 758DR cannot give me a light exposure of an hour, and it cannot give me an exposure at F1024. That is something that this has over my six $700 professional light meter, which is incredible. The big question is, am I going to leave my professional light meter at home and just bring that out? The answer is probably not. But I will say that even though I'll have both with me, it's most likely I'm going to leave the professional meter in my bag for most situations. I took those two different photos that you saw during my field trip, one with flat lighting and one with mixed lighting and they both turned out fine. Here's the one with flat lighting, and here's the one with mixed lighting. It was just fine. It took a, it took a great shot. And as far as my comparison of my meter readings between my 758DR and the Reveni Labs over by the C-Train tracks, I actually prefer the reading that the Reveni Labs gave me over the Siconic 758DR. So normally in that situation, I would just do a spot meter on the building in the background and I'd call it a day. Well, I realize it's apples and oranges because the angle of view is completely different on the Reveni Labs and I'm only doing a really small sample on my Siconic. 
you know, that's the way I would naturally meter each one. And it worked out in my favor with the Raveni Labs. I will keep in mind, however, that the mixed lighting scenario tends to overexpose a little bit, at least from my experience so far. The other thing that I need to make sure is if I'm going to use this on a camera with no light meter, that I do it with a camera that actually has a hot shoe. So my Pentax 67, it doesn't have a hot shoe. I'm not willing to buy a grip with a cold shoe because my 67 is big enough without one. But um, if Reveni Labs ever comes out with some kind of mount for the top of the um, eye level finder, or if they come up with some kind of, uh, I don't know, screw mount and actually put it on just the bottom on the tripod socket or something like that, I'd be into that. But yeah, those are my thoughts. I'm confident in saying that I would recommend this to anybody who's been using their phone as a light meter or who doesn't want to fuss around with a handheld meter and has a lot of cameras without meters or has cameras with meters that don't work properly. This is also a great way to test to see if your camera's light meter works properly. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, not the greatest photos in the world, but this was more of a testing stage for the light meter and getting a better feel for the uh, Fujika GL690. Yeah. If you like what I do around here, maybe you'll consider becoming my patron on Patreon. At the $5 level, you'll get your name in the credits and early access to my videos. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.